Hey everybody, welcome back. Today at the Red Barn, let's see how far we can get and if we can finish welding one side of the 914 Ferrari headers. So one thing I'm sure somebody's going to ask about is, are we going to back purge while we do the welds on the primaries? And back purging is where you flood the inside of the tube with shielding gas. So just for fun, we did a little quick test and had a little section of tube that we plugged with a secondary line. You know, this gets plugged and then you know, a piece of tape over the other end. This was cut away to make it easier to see. but. Here's the result. So that part, this side, was cut or was welded without the purging gas. And you can see how that's kind of gray and burnt looking and sort of crusty looking. And then this piece, this section here, was done with the back purging. And you can see how much less oxidation there is there. So uh, that makes it a no-brainer. The whole system's going to be back purged. That was a plan anyway, but I think it's kind of interesting to actually see the difference and not just hear about why everybody wants to do it. So there you go, back purging. All right, these are the two and a quarter to two and a half inch transitions, and I've trimmed this end to the length I want from the collector, and now I'm just going to get them tacked on. there's those done. Okay, we've got a couple of tubes final welded and disappeared the, the main weld in this area. And now with those done, it's a matter of getting, getting everything fit back together. Because again, the welding distortion does cause things to move around a little bit. So it's, uh, you know, I'm just doing a check fit here before everything gets final welded. All right, everything's uh, far enough along that I now need to get everything positioned to get these primaries tacked to the header flanges. I've determined that I need to be lifting it up while simultaneously getting the tubes positioned so that the gaps between the tubes are where I want them to be. So I'm gonna see if I can make that work. Pretty close to the to the gaps, but since this view is one you'll almost never see, this was more important to me. So, as you can see, all I did was just fuse these together so that I can now take this part off. And now with these tacked in place, I can pull the header off completely. We lost a little bit of the gap evenness, but this was, as you saw, chasing this and now that you know when they rotate here they lift and as they slide in and out they rotate and they lift and as long as these are flat i'm okay that this moved a little bit and as i said you know first go at making headers i'm gonna say this has been successful uh now i gotta duplicate it on the other side <laughs> oh boy well there's a major milestone one ferrari header to fit in a 914 off the car ready to be essentially finished. You know, it's one of those things I'm, <laughs> I, I'm looking at these clamps going, uh-oh. And yes, they do come all the way apart so they can be slid off. So all I'm gonna do now is yeah, take those off and get these uh, final tacked. And then we get to add the magical collector. That's gonna look so cool. I thought I was going to clamp this or make a some kind of clamping device to hold this square and then what I realized, and this is you know the lesson learned on, on making the first set of headers, you can see that these two tubes aren't completely parallel. So in the perfect world they would have been, but I missed that. So what that means is as I try to clamp things, it's really not able to grab, you know I was going to use like one by ones. Uh, welded together to make a box to hold this in position. But the more I looked at this, the more I realized I didn't like the idea of cutting away that uh, the fuse well that was really holding things nicely 
and risk having these things pop out of position enough that that would make the collector difficult to fit. So what I opted to do instead was on three sides, just tack the tubes together in three places. And then uh, these were all trimmed to length with those tacked in place. So I tacked the star on and that's in preparation for final welding. And then the fabricated, I don't know what they're called. Somebody referred to this as a pickle the other day. I don't know. Uh, but that ends up, then that will be final welded on. And then the collector gets fit and welded on. These get final welded and we will have our first side completely finished. And that is a major milestone. So, as I said, a few lessons learned that I can apply immediately on the other side. That's one of those things nobody's ever going to see it, but uh, I can do better next time. So, lessons learned, as I said. The first of the star tacked on. Now, obviously, that's going to get sanded and nice and smooth, nicely smoothed out. But uh, you know, we're we're almost we're almost there. Okay, with everything almost fully welded on the one side header, I figured it was a good idea to validate that everything was a fit before we got too excited. So back into the car goes the drivetrain. And the good news is, yep, just like planned, everything fits. You can see we got good clearance. Uh, the engine went in, no problem. And uh, a little bit tighter fit just because there's more stuff hanging out outside. But it went right in. So yay on that. And uh, maybe the less than good news is, after all that work, you know, you can hardly see it. You know, I was hoping it'd be a little more dramatic, but there you go. As far as other stuff, this has been fit. And I can't quite see everything while I'm lying down here, but it's approximately like that. The suspension's at full droop. And because of the nature of the axle angle, I'm going to end up with shocks that are, sh I'm going to have shocks uh, configured that are shorter than, than stock. So this won't droop this much anyway. So this may look, I got, you know, a finger width in here and I got some, you know, I can play a little bit with this angle, but this will only get bigger in terms of clearance. So we're good there. Um, so oxy sensor, plenty of room right in here to get the oxy sensor at a nice angle and clear everything. And again, this can stay on the car. And so long as I'm careful that the wiring doesn't get hung up on the suspension console, engine can, go, can still go in and out while everything's all hooked up. So we got good clearance there and talk about not that you'll ever see it, but <laughs> if you were the back of the tire, this would be your view. It's probably one of the best views of the exhaust system that uh, nothing will ever, ever see. And then in preparation for getting the collector tacked on, I made a little fixture to locate where I wanted it to be. And with that in position, I can go ahead, climb under there and tack the collector on. We can final weld this one side header. Well, there it is, the first side header done. All we have to do now is add the O2 bung and then work out where the v band's going to go to connect it to the rest of the exhaust system. So a lot of lessons learned on this and we'll immediately apply those to getting the other side done. Now it's just going to be build out the other side and work out the rest of the exhaust. I mean, how hard can that be?